Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my overview on the Viper job that's coming to 14 in Dawn Trail. I was recently given the opportunity to try the expansion out early and that includes checking out all the jobs and that includes Viper and Pictomancer. So be sure to take a look at this video, my Picto video, as well as all of the other job videos in the playlist in the description. Quick disclaimer though, reminder that Dawn Trail is still in development. Everything you see here is still subject to change. So don't be surprised if something is different, come early access. Now I actually released a video on Viper a few weeks back, detailing the job after what we saw in the letter from the producer live, where they did a demo of it and we basically saw almost the entire kit. A lot of what I said in that video ended up being exactly as I said it. So if you've seen it, you are well prepared for this one. There are however, a bunch of things that I didn't cover in that video that we now know for certain. So I'm gonna be going over everything from scratch all the same. Now Viper has four elements to its job gauges and some are definitely not apparent at first. The twin blade looking one is called Viper Sight, and its primary focus is simply to add a visual aid to how you progress through your three part combo. After the first two GCDs of your basic combo, one or both sides of the Viper Sight gauge will light up, indicating a potency bonus for one of your finishers. This is no different than just following the dotted lines on your hotbar, so follow along whichever one is easier to understand. Under the blades are these red diamonds called rattling coils. These are earned from certain attacks and can be expended to use Uncoiled Fury, a powerful ranged AoE GCD with several off-global follow-ups. These are primarily a downtime and AoE tool, so use them at your own discretion. Uncoiled Fury also has a three second recast time at base before factoring in haste or skill speed, so bear that in mind when you're looking to optimize. The orb looking gauge is called Serpent's Ire. This gauge fills up as you perform certain attacks such as combo finishers and twin blade actions. With 50 gauge called Serpent Offering, you can activate Reawaken, a GCD buff that not only activates a rapid fire attack mode, but also deals high AoE damage around the Viper. It has a 2.2 GCD before any haste buffs at that. The orbs on the bottom are called Anguine Tributes, and these function similarly to Reapers and Shroud, basically providing a visual track of how many reawakened global cooldowns you have left. Once in Reawakened, you will progress through a new GCD combo labeled 1st through 4th generation, all with a slightly shorter recast time of 2 seconds. At level 90, this will be all you do, these 4 generation GCDs. At level 96, you get a fifth stack of the Anguine Tributes and you learn Ouroboros, which replaces Reawaken on your hotbar and acts as the mode's big finishing move. It has a three second cast time before the haste buffs as well. At level 100, every GCD will trigger an off global, first through fourth legacy. So you'll just be rapidly alternating between doing GCD and off global combos up until using Ouroboros and leaving the phase. Just follow the dotted lines and you should be fine. You can also access Reawaken through using the Serpent's Ire ability at level 84, which grants Reawaken ready for 30 seconds. Expect to use this in openers and during burst windows for a quick Reawaken activation. Serpent's Ire also grants one rattling coil for your use as well. With the gauges explained, let's go back to the basics. Your job largely consists of a left blade combo and a right blade combo, and you'll be alternating between the two on the fly. Steel Fangs is a combo starter associated with the left blade, while Dread Fangs represents the right blade. As you progress through your combos, these abilities transform into the next combo step, providing buffs and debuffs for you to maintain along the way. You'll also have three off-global skills that can only activate under specific conditions. Serpent's Tail will only activate and become an off-global after any dual-wielding action, while Twin Fang and Twin Blood become active after Twin Blade actions. Twin Fang and Twin Blood are also used for your Uncoiled Fury off globals. I reference back to these as necessary throughout the guide. For your first combo action, you'll use Steel Fangs or Dread Fangs. Steel Fangs does higher potency, while Dread Fangs applies Noxious Nash for 20 seconds. This is a debuff that causes the Viper to deal more damage to the target while it's active. You'll want to keep 100% uptime on this debuff to permanently add more damage to all of your actions. Regardless of which weapon skill you started with, your second GCD option will be either Hunter Sting or Swift Skin Sting. Hunter Sting is the left blade action and provides a 10% damage buff for 40 seconds, while Swift Skin Sting provides a 15% haste buff for 40 seconds. 
The buff with the shorter remaining time will be marked with a dotted line when you reach this part of the combo. And if you have neither buff, then both of them will be dotted, and it'll be up to you to decide. Just use the action that's lit up here once you get going. Your final combo action can actually be one of four actions. You'll have Flank Sting Strike and Hind Sting Strike on your left blade, and Flank's Bane Fang and Hind's Bane Fang for your right. Obviously, the ones with Flank in the name deal bonus damage from the flank, and Hind attacks do bonus damage from the rear. These will naturally progress and swap as you perform and finish your basic combos, and the positional from the finisher will always alternate. So if you do flank first, it'll go rear, then flank, then rear, etc, etc. Just follow the dotted lines, and remember the whole flank hind rules. Each of these finishers will also grant 10 serpent offering for your ire gauge. At the end of every basic combo, Serpent's Tail will turn into Death Rattle, just offering a bonus off-global damaging skill for you to hit before you begin your next combo. The AoE equivalent is very similar, just with a different naming convention. Steel Maw and Dread Maw are the first combo actions, Hunter's Bite and Swift Skin's Bite for the second, and Jagged Maw and Bloodied Maw for the third. They also transform Serpent's Tail into Last Lash for that bonus off-global, similar to Death Rattle, just for AoE. Those are the combo basics, but once every 40 seconds, you'll generate a charge for your Twin Blade skills. Dreadwinder will expend a charge to initiate a single target Twin Blade combo, and Pit of Dread initiates the AoE equivalent. Both of these skills apply Noxious Nash to the target's hit while opening two follow-up GCDs and several damaging off-globals. Dreadwinder grants you access to Hunter's Coil for your left blade and Swift Skin's Coil for your right. Hunter's Coil does bonus damage from the flank, and Swiftskin's Coil does bonus damage from the rear, so be ready for some quick positional swaps. Now you can activate either one first, but you will activate both of them every time you activate a Twin Blade combo. Hunter's Coil grants the damage buff as well, and Swiftskin's Coil grants the haste effect. After activating everything, Twin Fang and Twin Blood will also transform into damaging off-globals, granting bonus potency if activated in the right order. Just Follow the dotted line. Also, keep in mind that all Twin Blade GCDs have a longer recast than your other attacks, three seconds before the haste buff and skill speed. Pit of Dread does the same just for AoE, granting access to Hunter's Den and Swift Skin's Den, without positional bonuses, of course. Basically, both of your Twin Blade combos rapidly apply Noxious Nash and grant you both of your combo buffs, damage and haste. Great for quickly getting your opener going or for mid-fight maintenance while doing a ton of damage. Each of the follow-up GCDs, both Hunters and Swift Skin for single and AoE, also grant five Serpent Offering each. Now, they do have a generic range attack as well, but the only other skill I haven't mentioned is Slither, which is their gap closer. It lets them dash to either an enemy or an ally. So, Dragoons, looks like you're not alone in the no defensive category anymore. In fact, they have even less than you. You have Life Surge. They don't even have that. They don't have any raid damage either, so it's like no defensives like Dragoon, in fact less because no life surge, and they're a selfish DPS, so they're going to have to crank some damage in order to be, well, competitive with the other melees. Except that even Dragoon has life surge and battle litany and all stuff, so Viper's performance is going to need to be top notch because it's also going to be competing probably with Samurai as they fulfill a similar sort of space. Now, in my original video, I posed an opener that was contingent on learning more specifically about the red diamonds on the job gauge. We weren't exactly sure potency-wise how would it all work out, and frankly, I haven't had time to do all the math either. That being said, this opener still seems to largely work out. I just have all the proper names for everything now. I'm largely following the Endwalker Samurai buff prio on damage buff versus haste buff first. With the longer GCDs, maybe it's better to get the haste one going, but I'm going to leave that to the math people. I also wonder about using Uncoiled Fury during buffs. It has a longer GCD like most of the Twin Blade attacks, but it's 900 potency for that longer GCD plus the OGCDs that follow. If you can only fit one more GCD and OGCD sets into buffs, then Uncoiled Fury's 900 potency certainly wins in that moment against Dreadwinder. It's also, in the case of there being an AoE, I think it would be a pretty clear choice as well. However, again, it doesn't generate 10 gauge, it's got that longer GCD, but if you're comparing it to Dreadwinder, then the longer GCD doesn't really matter as much. So um, I'm going to leave this to the math people, but my common sense dictates that if you had only one final option, that this would probably 
probably win. I just wonder about the over the fight loss of using it from melee range versus when you use it from ranged, you don't have to worry about losing gauge because you wouldn't be generating gauge in that time anyway. So uh, I just, it would, it would just be weird for me to sit on three diamonds forever until you have a ranged moment, unless they plan on giving us ranged moments a lot more and that's not a common thing. And that would actually make it a lot more interesting for Viper. Overall, the job is pretty fast and fun to play. It's very executional based with a lot of positionals. And what was really confusing to me when I was playing it is trying to read how all the skills interacted and transformed and everything when the job really just boils down to, now say it with me in the comment section, follow the dotted line all of them there's dotted lines everywhere and it really makes the gauge kind of silly in a sense it's like one of them just tracks things you know like a general resource you know gain and then use and the other one tracks your combo <laughs> it's kind of like with dancers gauge where it tracks your dance steps and i'm like i never use that it kind of just feels that way but it looks fancy and it looks intimidating so I don't know, it's just kind of weird overall, but at the very least, when you get through to it, it does feel pretty good to play. I don't know if it's gonna be something that I dabble with a whole lot as someone who gets stuck on Fizz ranged all the time, but I'll definitely check it out on launch. It will be the first job that I level, and I'm even gonna be cosplaying as a Viper for the launch of, well, for the early access launch of the game. So I'm looking forward to getting more uh, in tune with the job and getting to spend more time with it and uh, probably sweating a lot in that outfit. Anyway, that is going to be a wrap for my video overview guide, whatever, for Viper and Dawn Trail. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out all the changes to the existing jobs and check out what I have to say about Pictomancer. I did a video on that for the live letter as well and you probably want to see what I got right, what I got wrong, and what's changed since that first video. But again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.